should never feel like you have to change to please someone. You should never feel like you have to be a different person to please someone. And if you ever feel that way, then you need to get out of that relationship. It's about to be the new year or it is the new year by the time this video goes up. And I feel like there are a lot of videos on succeeding, uh, reaching your goals, finding new opportunities, finding your best self, which I think is awesome. I think any opportunity to do that should be um, rewarded and should be encouraged because I think that's a really good mindset to have. I feel like a lot of times with the new year, we expect all these things to happen. We expect to succeed and do really great. But then by February or March, we start to see that maybe we're not as good as we thought we were. Um, we deal with failure, we deal with rejection, and we get really depressed and we get that question of why am I never good enough? So today's video, I just wanted to discuss this and talk to you guys about it. It's been something that I've been thinking about a lot and I feel like a lot of times I just sit around and I think about these things and I don't actually like ask you guys, hey, what do you guys think about this? If you don't really know that much about me, I am currently 18 years old. I live in New York City. I'm in college. Um, and I feel like college is one of those times where you just constantly feel like you're never really enough. I'm the kind of person that really resists change. Um, part of me feels like I really thrive on change and I really, really enjoy it. But actually getting to that and going through change, I'm just gonna have to admit is not the most fun thing for me. With change approaching, I think there's also a fear of rejection that approaches a well and a fear of failure that comes. And I just want to help you guys deal with the fear of failure today and why failure can actually be a good thing. So part one of this video is going to be why failure can be a good thing and how to deal with it. Part two of this is going to be about not necessarily falling into the temptation of feeling like you're not good enough and like you will never be good enough. And then at the end of this video, I'm just going to take your own questions because I always like to get what input you guys have on this. I ask for questions on my Instagram as always. It's just at Michelle Reed if you want to be my next one. We live in a world that really, really rewards success and rewards being the best and being on the top and not necessarily actually being on the top, but looking like you're on the top through like social media um, and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and just looking like you have it all together. And like, I feel like society often kind of conditions us to be this way, to always look like we're on and like we have it together. And there are just times when you don't have have it together if I can get an amen. So I think the first part of dealing with failure is just seeing that people fail and it's inevitable and it's going to happen. For the start of a new year, I think it's great to take new opportunities and a plan and have goals because I think being a goal oriented person is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think that's the best person to be. But I think with the onset of creating new goals, you need to establish that maybe these goals are gonna fail and they're not gonna turn out how you think they're going to, but that can be a good thing. Rejection is one of those things that just hurts so bad whether it be from a person you're dating or a person that you want to date whether it be from a job whether it be from your friends your family rejection hurts and I'm not going to deny that not everyone's gonna like you not every job is gonna accept you you're not gonna be able to succeed in every opportunity that you get but for me personally that is one of the most liberating thoughts to have that not everything is gonna turn out perfectly and not everything is gonna work your way because Honestly, if I'm gonna be candid for a sec, I wouldn't want everything to turn out the way that I want it to. There's so many things in my life that haven't gone the way that I planned, um, but they're so much better this way. They're so much better than if I had tried to plan every step, if I had tried to do everything first. So I think the first step is just admitting that rejection is gonna happen and it may hurt for a little while, but the end result can be good. If you guys don't know, I'm a really, really big reader. I love reading. Whenever I read, I just feel like I'm a sponge and I'm just like absorbing all of this knowledge. And one of my favorite books is actually The Power of Habit. You've probably heard of this. It's a really popular book. Basically, this book talks about how to form really good habits, whether that be like working out, being successful in your job, being a goal-oriented person, but it talks about this equation of how to actually cultivate your thoughts and change the way that you think to form really good habits. Basically, how habits work is there is a cue, there is a routine, and there is a reward. And I think with dealing with failure, it really follows this equation. Your cue is when you fail, you fail, you don't get what you want, whether that be you don't get love from someone, you don't get the job you want. Your routine is how you choose to react to that. So you can choose to A, react and be really, really disappointed. You can mope around, you can be scared, you can feel very self-pity for yourself, you can be upset, or you can see this as a good thing and see it as this path didn't go how I want it to, so how can I take it another way? And the last part, your reward, is what you actually get from that experience. So for me personally, I find if I take the negative path and I get really upset with myself and I get down on myself, 
and I sit around and I mope about it for a while, I don't get anything from that experience. Simply learn that I need to stop crying in my bed more. But whenever you choose the positive outlook and seeing failure as something that can be a good thing, you actually get so many more benefits from it. I think so many times whenever we think about failure and we think about rejection, we give it like this lofty idea and how to react to it. And we don't necessarily give it concrete ways to deal with it when it is something that's practical. You need to stop putting it above and beyond this realm that we can't reach when it's really simply just putting yourself out of the situation. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say this is how I've always dealt with failure because it's not. I have been upset by failure and rejection for six months at a time and I never truly get over it. And I feel like I'm over it and I feel like I'm doing better, but I'm still thinking about it. I think dealing with failure and rejection is something that I have always just kept learning to be better at, um, but it is a practical way of thinking. The second part of this video I wanna talk about is being inadequate and feeling like you're not good enough. I know you've probably heard this enough and you've heard it from so many people, your mom, your dad, your friends, your boyfriend, whatever it may be. There's no such thing as not being good enough. I think there are certain instances where you're not cut out for a job and maybe you don't have all the skills and the talents that you need, but that doesn't mean that you're not good enough. That simply means that job is not fit for you but there is something else that will be. In relationships, I think it's so easy whenever you break up with someone or you're not even dating someone and you lose that relationship um, to feel like you're inadequate, to feel like you're not needed and to feel like something within you is messed up. This is a much bigger problem than just dealing with failure or rejection, I definitely think, but it's not you. I think with a relationship, it's simply you're not compatible with someone. Something wasn't working, there was a rift in the equation, and I think to some degree you can work to fix that, but I don't think it's ever you fixing yourself to change, to be a certain way, to fit a certain mold, to be better to be good or feel like you have to change to please someone you should never feel like you have to be a different person to please someone and if you ever feel that way then you need to get out of that relationship or out of that friendship because that's not healthy and there are so many other healthy relationships that you could be in so now i'm going to go into instagram and get a little bit more specific from you guys how do you deal with feeling like you have no talent in anything i am definitely the kind of person that i will look at myself and i'll be like and I'll compare myself to other people and I will look at these people who are so big and great and I'll be like, I have absolutely no talent compared to them. Personally, I believe, this is my opinion, it might not be yours, but that we are all given specific talents, specific gifts from God that we are meant to pursue. Even if you aren't a Christian, even if you don't believe in God, I feel like you can believe that every one of us has something within us that we can pursue. I think a lot of times we think of talents as being super athletic, being super driven, being really smart and intelligent and these kind of big ideals, but sometimes our talents are much smaller than that. Sometimes it's being really good at working with people. Sometimes it's being really good at talking. Sometimes it's about being really good with our hands and creating things and working with things. Things that may seem much smaller and not like a talent, but I think they can be a talent. So for me personally, whenever I think about a job and I think about a career, I think about the little things about me that might be a little different, that I might be a little bit better at. And I pursue those things. And cause I think those are my talents and those are things that I am good at. How to combat the feeling of jealousy that leads to feeling inadequate. Best answer that I can have is to quit it. I think I started to think this way about two years ago. Whenever someone would succeed or do well, I would just be thankful for them. I'd be thankful that there are people who are so talented that can do those things. And I'd be so, so happy for them. Instead of seeing other people succeeding as like a threat to you or feeling like they're better than you, seeing that as, oh my gosh, that person is so, so cool. And I wanna work hard like that too. I think that's the mindset to have. I also got a lot of questions about college rejection because I know this is the time when you're probably starting to get those letters in but all i can say is one be happy that you applied be happy that you filled out the application that you worked your hardest and that's all you can do in the end is work hard no matter how intelligent you are smart rich poor whatever it may be you can always work hard and i know you don't want to hear that there are other fish in the sea but there are there are other colleges that are going to accept you and that are going to be good i know we have dream schools i know we have places that we feel like we will find fulfillment out of but there is always another plan it can still provide you just as much fulfillment um, there are other fish in the sea if you have any specific activities slash hobbies that you like to do that help you pick you back up again once you've fallen down yes i feel like it's really important to have practical ways to pick yourself up instead of just changing your mindset because that can be a lot harder to do so practical things that i like to do is one going for a walk it's the simplest thing but it really does clear your mind two having a day to not go on the internet not go on social media 
YouTube, the TV, whatever it may be, just block it out. Three, writing down my thoughts is something that's so important to me. I know it seems kind of dumb just to write out how you're feeling, but once you start doing it and you get used to it, you really do feel like you're getting stuff off your chest. Praying and having times of silence just to think is also really important. And lastly, telling people. I think letting people know how you're feeling is so important because A, they can give you input, and B, you're actually getting it out and you're having an outlet and you're not simply holding in all these thoughts, which can be very, very dangerous if you do that for too long. So that is the end of this advice video. I really hope this helped you guys out. Give me some feedback down below. Let me know what you're struggling with, other questions you have. I'd love to respond with you guys. Also, feel free to respond to other people. I think it's great whenever the comment section is just a safe place for people to comment what they want to and to get help from people. So I'd really encourage you guys to help each other out because I think that's the sweetest thing that you can do. Also, if you'd like to see more of these videos, give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe the buttons down below and watch my last video it'll be linked right here i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys in my next one bye my friends